Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a little chat that was occasioned by one of your comments. And it was a nice comment. It was lovely. We were talking about Fort Fengler, and somebody mentioned in passing that they'd read somewhere that the reason he stayed in Germany, even though he hated the Nazis, was because they were going to do something nasty to his mother if he left. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, and I don't care. The question I want to think about, or have us consider, and it's kind of an obvious one, really, when you think about it, but it just sort of struck me. Why do we defend these awful people who happen to be artists? You know, I, it's very interesting. We want the artists that we like to be nice, to be good people, to be admirable in ways other than in their art. And, you know, Fort Fengler, there are all kinds of excuses made for Fort Fengler, just billions of them, right? That he was, you know, he had to stay to you know, preserve German culture from the Nazi barbarism. Never mind the, the unbelievable hubris that that statement contains in thinking that he was the avatar of German culture and that nobody else who stayed behind or who may have joined the Nazi party could be the avatar of, I mean, please. Don't go there. It's unbelievable. All that shows is that, like so many artists, he was a completely self-regarding, navel-gazing narcissist. But that's, that's another issue. I, I can only give you my own view of it, and then you can give me yours. I don't care what these people said. I don't care what they did. I don't care how horrible they were. I assume that most of them are horrible. I really do. I, I, I don't expect any better qualities from artists than I do from anyone else. I mean, yes, we should have standards. We should expect people to act in a superior, morally ethical way, but I, I, I don't count on it. And I don't think they're going to. And I don't think the number of artists who are going to do it are, are is, is any larger than, you know, the number of good people in the rest of the population. It's really very, very interesting. that This whole sort of concept comes down to the idea that there is something, you know, morally or ethically elevated about the arts, especially because so much of it involves sacred music, which is theoretically morally and ethically elevated, although I don't really find that to be true either. But uh, it really is a situ an interesting thing. You know, Hindemith, you know, wrote a book, I think it was called The Composer's World. I don't know, I had to read it. Because when I did my master's thesis on Matthias Der Mahler, I had to read all of his writings. And, and he, he, he was talking about how he believed, truly believed, in the moral and ethical ability of music to elevate, elevate the character of the listener. I mean, he really took that very, very seriously. That's why he never became an atonalist. He thought it was, there was something amoral about it or immoral because it did not follow the, the laws of nature as expressed by the medieval theorists and the music of the spheres. And that was all very complicated and kind of confused um, intellectually a little bit. Mm. But that was his theory. And lots of people have that theory. People have always associated music with moral improvement when women don't participate, for example, and with moral depravity when women do participate. Isn't that nice? Hang on a second, folks. I need to take a swig. Or other things like that. The theater has always been the sinkhole of sin and depravity when music is associated with it. And the church has always been the bastion of, of goodness and decency when secular musical elements are kept out. That's one of the reasons, for example, that Bach tends to get a, a higher rating than Handel. Handel's music is invariably theatrical. Bach's music is almost invariably sacred. I mean, you know, that's what they did. That was their different jobs. But it's just sort of also differences in character. So, so there is that. And so in association with these theories about the moral qualities of music, uh, we have this, this personal feeling that we want the artists that we admire to be superior beings because they give us pleasure and they give us this, they may make us feel spiritually elevated. And you don't want somebody like 
Jimmy Levine making you feel spiritually elevated while he's running around um, sexually abusing young men uh, or, or women or whoever abuses who or Charles Dutrois and women and, you know, you know, all of this sexual stuff that's going on. How do we segregate that from the feelings we personally have about the artists we admire? And all I can say, and I just want to make this little point and not belabor it too much, is, is people are people. I mean, that's all. And it doesn't matter what you what they do or how you know what what kind of superior qualities they arrogate to themselves, which is something artists always do. You know, they they may, they may think they're living on a higher plane. But I think most of them are jerks. Um, most of them are completely uninterested in anything other than their own careers. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, if you look at somebody like Wagner, who was the biggest asshole in all of music and one of the greatest composers, and people still have trouble with that. I don't have any trouble with it at all. All I care about is what they did and if I like the music. Now, if one of them is an, an absolute animal, you know, a serial killer, someone who's just, I, I, I detest, um, I may wait till they're dead, <laughs> you know, before I, before I start paying serious attention to their music, because happily, Unless they're completely unique, fabulous, genius composers, of which there are very few of those that you have to put up with, most of these people are doing the same stuff. So there's always, you always have choices. And so my advice to you, and this is, I'm just going to wrap this up. My advice to you in very simple terms is just don't worry. Don't worry at all. If they're assholes, if they're horrid, if they're awful, stick with the music, be happy with that. And if you are profoundly disturbed by defects in their moral character, then listen to somebody else. It's really very, very simple. But don't, don't be disappointed because they don't live up to your standards. I mean, they don't have any obligation to do that. And, and we don't have any reason to expect that they will. Do we? Hmm? You tell me. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.